What's up guys, it's Mark, back with another video, 8am, we're out here grinding again. Let's get a quick time check. That's right, we got 157 today. So yeah, we're recording this video late again, but you're getting it early in the morning, right when you want it. Now before we do get going into covering all the trades that happened, because I think there's what? Or there's four traits. Before we get going into that, make sure to leave a like on this video. Very much appreciated me. Help support the channel. Subscribe if you are new and you enjoy the content on our way to 30k subs. And you guys know the drill by now. Get in the comment section. Let's have a conversation about what's going on with these trades. So the first trade we're going to talk about, the title of the video, Josh Donaldson was traded from the Toronto Blue Jays to the Cleveland Indians in exchange for a player to be named later. So from the Toronto Blue Jays perspective, there's not much to talk about. You got rid of Josh Donaldson. He was probably one of the best Blue Jays of all time. So good. Won an MVP there. Was bringing them to the playoffs multiple years. He was a fantastic player for Toronto. Now, let's talk about the juicy thing. The Indians getting Josh Donaldson. What does this mean for their team? So first, let's address a question that I've seen a lot of people having is, where's Josh Donaldson going to play? It's very simple. Josh Donaldson goes to third base. Jose Ramirez goes to second. Kipnis either goes to the bench or plays an outfield position. That's the simplest way to say it. Now, let's talk about actual baseball here. Josh Donaldson, when healthy, is one of the better players in baseball. You can't deny that. The dude's won an MVP. He puts up great offensive numbers every year. And he plays a pretty good third base too. So just from that perspective alone, the Cleveland Indians are very happy they got Josh Donaldson, even if it is for a half-year rental because he is a free agent in the upcoming season. Now, of course, the big question with Josh Donaldson right now is, is he actually healthy? We know he had the shoulder issue at the beginning of the year. He's had calf issues now that have kept him out of the game for a while. But he is slated to come back on Saturday for the Cleveland Indians, which means he's pretty much much healthy enough to play. Now, just a random tidbit in the upcoming week, exactly a week from yesterday, I think it was, Josh Donaldson will be back in Toronto playing for the Indians against the Blue Jays, which is kind of interesting. You know he's going to get a huge standing ovation. The Blue Jays fans love him. They're good fans. They're not spoiled. They're going to show that they absolutely love the guy and you're going to miss him and hope the best for him. So that's good for you, Blue Jays fans. Well done. And again, for the Indians, like I said, if he can play at an average level of his capacity is going to be a huge upgrade in your offense. By adding him to the lineup and moving Kipnis to the outfield, you extend your lineup, you lengthen it, make it that much more tough to face. You add a nice right-handed power bat into that lineup with Josh Donaldson. And like I said, he's a pretty good fielder as well. He's not, you know, the best fielder at third base, but he does a very solid job. Keep in mind, I'm going to go through Josh Donaldson's stats from the past years. This dude is a stud. So this year, of course, he's been injured, only played in 38 games, has five home runs, and is hitting 234. But let's go through his last three seasons on the Blue Jays. 2015, he was an MVP. 122 runs scored, 41 home runs, 123 RBIs, 297 batting average, 371 on base, 568 slugging, 939 OPS, 151 OPS plus, and yeah, he won the MVP award that year pretty obvious why he was a beast. 2016, not a bad year as well. He finished fourth that year in the MVP voting. He scored 122 runs, hit 37 homers, 99 runs driven in. He hit a 284 average, 404 on base, 549 slugging, 953 OPS, and a 153 OPS plus. The dude was, again, a beast. And then 2017, which you could call a down year, but that would be insane. A lot of people would take this production at third base for a down year. Scored 65 runs, which is a little bit lower, but the lineup changed a bit last year. 33 home runs, 78 RBIs, 270 average, 385 on base, 559 slugging percentage, 944 OPS, 148 OPS plus. The dude still produces at an extremely high level when he's healthy. Like I said, this year he hasn't been healthy, so he hasn't been able to play. And when he has been on the field, he's been compromised because of the injuries. Now, what does this do for the Cleveland Indians in regards to the playoffs? I think it gives them a lot better chance. They're definitely not the American League favorites to make it into the World Series. And I still don't know if they make it past the ALDS because they're going to have to either go through the Astros or the A's. And that's, that's not an easy job. But this does make it a lot closer for the Indians, who were, you know, just kind of a solid team, but they've been having issues. Their pitching hasn't been great this year. That's why they got guys like Brad Hand. But again, come playoff time, who knows? They might be a really solid team. This extends their lineup. It lengthens it. That's one of the things that made the Yankees so dangerous at the beginning of the year was their lineup basically had no weak points. You had Glaber Torres hitting the nine hole. So now by adding Josh Donaldson, moves Kipnis down further, moves other guys down further into spots that they better suited in. And it's really just a good move. If you're an Indians fans, you are you are pumped. You are excited that you got Josh Donaldson, even if it is for half a year. You also gave up absolutely nothing. Again, you can probably get my feeling here, but I love the trade. The next trade we're going to talk about is Curtis Granderson being traded to the Brewers. The Brewers, of course, got Gio Gonzalez earlier in the day, and we're not done then. They got Curtis Granderson, who looks like he's going to be a nice bench bat for them, because that outfield's pretty good, let's be honest. Maybe he could platoon with Domingo Santana. They'll, they'll figure something out. They know what they're doing. Didn't give up anything. Gave up a low-level prospect in Demi 
Arimoyale? I don't know how to say his name. Granderson's having a pretty decent year, hitting 240, 11 homers, and, you know, just a little bit of time here and there. He's obviously a great leader. He's a pretty decent fielder. No arm, but he makes some decent catches. He gets to the balls that he should. Nice left-handed back and hit a home run off the bench. Nice pinch hitter. I loved him when he was on the Mets. He was definitely one of the better players on our team, even though his stats may have not shown for it. He was one of those players that did just more than his numbers. It's called the eye test. Not all these numbers matter sometimes. And again, you're just making your lineup deeper. You now have guys that you can fill in in different spots. I think it was a good move for the Brewers. Low risk, high reward. So who cares? You should be happy with it. You got Gio and Curtis Granderson today. Nice job. And Xavier Cedeno. Forgot about him too. Then the third trade is involving the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Los Angeles Dodgers, which sends David Freeze from the Pirates to the Los Angeles Dodgers in exchange for a prospect. People are asking, where is David Freeze going to play? Well, he's going to play on the bench. But again, getting more players that are actually of quality to be able to come off the bench. Let's say Justin Turner gets on base late in the game. The dude's slow. You can pinch run for him, get somebody on the bases who could maybe score a run. And if you don't, or if you do, and you need to go close out the game in the ninth, you can put David Freeze over into third base and you're not really getting a downgrade that badly. Now, of course, he's not the offensive player that Justin Turner is, but he's a decent enough third baseman. So really, it's just about depth. Depth, depth, depth. National League Baseball is so different than American Leagues. You have the pitchers hitting. You have to make double switches, defensive changes a lot more often than the American League. So getting a guy like David Freeze allows for versatility in that lineup. And right now, the Dodgers are just trying to do anything that can make them play better because they are not in the playoffs right now. Who would have seen that coming? Let's be honest. The Dodgers not making the playoffs possibly. That's a bad year. Dave Roberts might be getting fired if they don't make it. Then the fourth and final trade that we're going to talk about in this video is a Danny Echeverria getting traded from the Pirates to the New York Yankees. Dita Gregorius, of course, is on the DL. Not necessarily sure when he'll come back exactly, but Danny Echeverria will be a nice backup to fill in for him. Echeverria can play short. He can play second. He can play third. So he's versatile there. And he's really not that bad of a player. Tampa Bay cut him earlier in the year. Didn't really know why. I think it's because they wanted Willie Adamez to get more playing time, but it was interesting to just get rid of him for nothing. And then the Pirates just picked him up, traded him, get something back from the Yankees. That's a pretty good move. Similar to the Jose Bautista one with the Mets. You signed a guy for nothing, you traded him, and you got something. Danny Echeverria on the year is hitting 250. Again, not a big guy in the power department. He's only appeared in 76 games. He doesn't walk a lot. His on-base percentage is only about 30 points higher than his batting average. But for the Yankees, he's a nice little backup. Again, adding depth. Depth is huge. I know I said the American League doesn't do as many moves, but it's nice to always have depth. So again, getting a guy like a Danny Echeverria seems like a good move. Honestly, all these moves at the August waiver deadline have been good. You can't complain about it. You haven't seen anybody just throwing away a ton of prospects for absolutely nobody. They all seem to be pretty smart moves. So you got to give it up to these teams for going out, getting the players that they want, improving their team and really making a push. Because as a baseball fan, as a Met fan, that's all I ever want. I want to see my team go for it full. 2015, the Mets made a good push getting players like Kelly Johnson, Juan Uribe, just to name a few. And I can't stress to you enough how important those players were for the Mets down the stretch. So getting these guys for these teams may not seem like huge deals, besides the Josh Donaldson one, that's huge. But these Echeverias, these freezes may not seem like huge deals, but they can make a huge difference on the team. I'd love to know what you guys think of all these trades in the comment section down below. So let me know your opinions. Let's have a conversation. You know, I love to talk baseball. You can also follow me on Twitter at DraftNeckMark. Tweet me if you ever want to talk about baseball. I love, I love talking on Twitter, just not in the DMs. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content we post mlb stuff all day every day and yeah it's gonna take us to the end of the video don't worry the immortal video is coming out at 1 p.m for those of you who made it this long if you did enjoy it you know hit the like button as always youtube recommends you watch this video right here so click it they know what they're talking about as well as my most recent upload and you can click my face here to subscribe thank you guys for watching i'll see you next time bye